Welcome to the Shipping Podcast, where you meet interesting maritime professionals sharing their passion for the shipping industry and their everyday job. I am your host. My name is Lena Gottberg. In the 18th episode of the Shipping Podcast, you will be meeting Jeannie Grasso. Jeannie is a maritime lawyer and a partner of Blank Rome in Washington, D.C. She's also a member of Vista the USA, which was formed in 1997 and is the fastest growing of the National Vista Associations. There is always a competition. For a while, Sweden was at the top, and then the Netherlands, and then the United States took up the race. And now I think the United States has most members in their Vista Association. Jeannie was named as number four out of the top ten maritime lawyers listed by the Lloyd's List in 2015. She's a member of the Executive Committee of Vista International, and she's just doing so much good to promote the organization. Vista USA is going to host the Vista International AGM and Conference in the autumn of 2016. And they have chosen the conference theme, Always in Motion, Ever Changing, focusing on the speed at which our industry operates, at the same time navigating an ever-changing landscape of regulations and commercial changes. You can find more information on vista2016international.com, especially if you want to attend. I think there is a limited number of tickets available. This is Jeannie Grasso for you. Jeannie Grasso, welcome to the Shipping Podcast. Thank you, Lena. I'm glad to be here. Who are you? I am a maritime lawyer with Blank Rome in Washington, D.C. I'm a partner and vice chairman of our practice group and a co-chair of our maritime industry team. How did you end up in shipping? Uh, it's a funny story. I started life as a fisheries biologist, working principally as a researcher, Worked for the government for a while, for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. And after about eight years, was looking for something more exciting and decided to go to law school. And uh, that led me to some of my prior contacts. And I ended up at a small maritime firm. And that was about 20 years ago. So what is your specialty now working as a lawyer? My specialty is um, regulatory. I do a lot of pollution work. I deal with the Coast Guard and the Maritime Administration and the Customs Service, solving regulatory problems for shipping companies and facilities, um, keeping them in compliance, and getting them out of trouble if they get into trouble. Uh, I do a lot of work with pollution and um, incident response, but the goal is compliance to avoid those problems. And you're also on the VISTA Executive Committee now. I am. Uh, I got involved in VISTA probably about 10 years ago. I started out as head of the DC, Washington, D.C. chapter, became president of VISTA USA, spent five years uh, running VISTA USA, and um, at that time it was time for some new blood in VISTA USA, and I went on to the Executive Committee and left Wista USA in the very, very capable hands of Alexandra and Agnostis. So what is your task on the executive committee? What is your responsibility there? Well, on the executive committee of Wista International, my role is really to get the name of Wista out into the industry, to promote Wista, to show many ship-owning companies the benefits of their uh, employees joining Wista, I'm also in charge of the Americas region, so we are encouraging the formation of new WISTAs, WISTA the Bahamas, WISTA Bermuda, WISTA Brazil, and others. We are trying to get the Americas group together to, for more of a benefit for North and South and Central America, and uh, just really getting the good word out there that WISTA is an organization that can benefit women and can benefit their companies. Could you please develop that a little bit for people who doesn't know about Vista? What are the benefits for, for a company to have females as members of the Vista International? Good question. Um, th- there are many benefits. One of the benefits is networking. You get to know women from all over the world. So if your company, your law firm, your client face issues in a company you have a or, or in, in a country, you have a network out there to call on, whether it's just for information 
For legal advice, for practical advice, it's a great starting point because there's a familiarity and a trust. The second is it's a great educational organization. We have conferences every year internationally in a different country. In the USA, we have an annual general meeting. We have been told by many in the industry and in the government, including the U.S. Coast Guard, that they are some of the best and most significant conferences they have attended. And uh, in fact, at our last annual general meeting in May, a, a Coast Guard captain who was one of our panelists, a man, sent an email to about 20 women in the industry noting the benefits of WIST of this organization he wasn't familiar with before, but encouraging them to join, which is fantastic. Amazing. But if you compare it, I mean, there must be an international organization for lawyers with both men and women. Yes. So if you compare that to the only female organization, what's the difference there? Um, well, uh, to make one thing clear, WISTA, while it's women in shipping, it's not an only female organization. Many national WISTA associations have men. We have men that are members in the U.S., that provide a very valuable uh, valuable input. Men are supportive of our organization. Um, they promote women in their organization. So we are not discriminatory in any way. Um, we all have to work together. In terms of a distinction, I think women generally like to work with women. So it's great to have that network of women, but I just want to stress that it's not exclusive of men and we're all in this industry together. One more benefit is the business benefit. And I think we're all in this for business, and sometimes networking can be confused with socializing, which is, is not necessarily true. I think through the networking that you achieve in WISTA, um, there are many business opportunities. I know that as a maritime lawyer, I have sent work around the world to other maritime lawyers, and I know maritime lawyers in other countries have sent work across the ocean to me. So it's great having that network, which is also a business network, not just social. I agree. And yesterday we spoke a little bit about the future of VISTA and making a strategy going forward. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that we identify the men who are actually supported because we can, yeah, we can move mountains, I think, together. I absolutely agree. And I think any man, any senior executive, man or woman, I, I don't like to distinguish that experiences an international WISTA conference or experiences at least a WISTA annual general meeting in the USA is a convert. And uh, all we can ask is for the opportunity for men and women in senior positions to, to open their minds to an organization which uh, has a lot of potential and can do great things. And next year, we're going to go to the United States. We are. Uh, the United States will be hosting the 2016 Annual General Meeting and International Conference. We are hosting it for the first time ever on the cruise ship. We will be on the Holland America Konigsdam. We are very excited for a number of reasons. Uh, one is it shows the support for our industry by bringing uh, the WISTA group from around the world onto a cruise ship. And second, it will give many women the opportunity to experience a ship firsthand, which I think many haven't. We will have tours of the bridge, engine room, garbage room, galley. There will be the opportunity to interact with the captain, the chief engineer, the environmental officer, and the crew, which I think will provide everyone uh, an amazing, amazing opportunity and education. Yeah, so they will have to practice before we arrive or they, they will be exhausted once we leave. They've never experienced that before. 200 women on a tour of the ship. Yeah, well, you know, 200 won't go together. We'll break it down into very small groups, obviously. Um, it will only be when the ship is dockside for safety reasons. But, you know, it's very, it'll be very educational and, and there's a lot of excitement. We hope to uh, have more than 200. We've booked rooms right now for up to 400 people. So we are looking forward to, uh, to a great outcome and an educational experience. We're all looking forward already, even though we haven't finished this one in Istanbul yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, just to promote it a little bit, we'll have a, a very fun video and information coming out going live on our website on November the 2nd. Oh, good. I'll make sure that the link to that one is in the show notes of this show. So how do you see the future for shipping in general? Well, you know, as, as a regulatory lawyer uh, dealing principally with pollution and compliance, I see a very busy future. I mean, international regulation is increasing, especially on the environmental side, air, water, waste. 
Um, compliance is always going to be key. Uh, port state control, I think, especially in the United States, is increasing and is very serious. And uh, compliance and investing in compliance is a much better business decision for ship owners and operators than dealing with an enforcement action or the aftermath. So I always preach the compliance message and, um, and hope we can help clients comply rather than defend them. But uh, if we have to defend them, of course, we want to be in that role because with contacts, with knowledge, with experience, I think we can mitigate damages to a very large degree. And what about recruitment? Do you see the young people in shipping in the U.S.? You know, you, you see some young people, but I don't think you see enough. I think we as an industry really need to educate the young people at a younger age than we do now. I think there are some efforts at getting into the high schools and grammar schools, which is good, because you have to have these kids thinking about the future in the maritime industry, you know, before they get to college. So I, I think there's still a, a lot of work that needs to be done in educating our youth and encouraging them to join this industry, which is an amazingly exciting industry. We're not very good self-promoters, so no, that was there's, my there's some question. room for improvement. I put the same question to every guest. How do you think we should become more visible as an industry? Do you have any ideas? Ah, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great question. I think there has been an advertisement for the rail industry that indicates that For one gallon of gas, they can go 500 miles. And that has really resonated with a lot of people who didn't understand rail. I think the most of the population, especially in the United States, does not understand shipping. They don't understand that 90% of the stuff that they get comes by ship. So um, I think any coordinated effort is going to be challenging, but I think it's really worth thinking about. And probably some of the major trade associations would really have to drive it because there are so many different aspects of shipping from domestic shipping, tugs and barges, container, tankers, crews. And then you look at the ports and infrastructure and logistics. It would be a, a, a large effort that requires coordination, but maybe some of the bigger trade associations could think about that. Thank you very much for your time. Who do you think I should uh, interview the next time? Who would you be interested in listening to? Oh, let me think. I, 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 you know, it, it's almost impossible to think about this. I think if you can get a mix of ship owners, P&I clubs, logistics providers, even the government. We have a couple Coast Guard uh, representatives here from the U.S. now. I think, you know, a, a very diverse audience to, to, to highlight the diversity of our industry would be, uh, would be great. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you very much, Jeannie. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. I think that Jeannie does a really good selling of the Vista concept. If you're interested in either becoming a member or you think that you have someone in your organization that could benefit from becoming a member, please visit vista.net and find the contact person in each country. If you want to follow a little bit more in details of what we are doing, you find us on Facebook. So now you have got two different tasks. You should promote both Vista and the shipping podcast. I think it's up to you which one you want to begin with, as long as you take the time to spread the word about shipping, women in shipping, shipping podcast, whatever. There is a new lady coming up for tomorrow. Thank you for listening to The Shipping Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. And hey, you can always tell your friends about it.